one, two, three. We are not live. We are not live, but we are alive, Gary. Welcome, welcome the YouTuber. Welcome, Gary. And today we are going to be creating beautiful watercolor baubles. Oh yes, we're unleashing the inner artist in ourselves today, Gary, aren't we? And going a bit festive. Have you noticed I put the sparkly top on? I like it. Yes, it is rather well sparkly, isn't it? Slightly sparkly. I'm showing you the slightest sparkle. There's me all in black. <laughs> I'm, I'm, just not going to, I'm not going to the spirit of the thing yet. I'm, I'm, I'm getting myself cheated up. That's, you know, just getting ready. And then I will be Mr. Sparkle. That's will what you? Be. Mr. Mr. Sparkle. Sparkle. I like that as a name for you, Gary. Mr. Sparkle <laughs> is here. <laughs> like a children's entertainer. <laughs> anyway, lovely YouTuber, um, if you would please like our content, it's probably unlikely at this moment because people have turned, tuned in for a serious watercolour session, they're thinking, oh, these two idiots, but anyway, if you get to the end of the video and you like it, please do give us a thumbs up. Um, also as well, if you would like to subscribe to our channel, it means you can get more madness like this every single Friday when we load our content. Um, and also, if you would like to hit the bell, that means that you'll be notified when we load said content. Um, so here we are. Uh, what we do on this channel, by the way, is uh, give you a little exercise every single week. Sometimes we have guests. We have had a lot of guests lately, but today it's just me and Gary. Just me and Gary. So if you want to skip ahead straight away to that content, you can because the time code is below so you can get straight into your painting. But if you want to stick around, Gary and I always have a little chat. We call it mindfulness, but we talk about life and some of the lessons that we learn as we go through our time on planet Earth. So lovely, Gary. I'm going to be completely honest to our lovely YouTubers and say that uh, Gary and I have just had a very in-depth conversation for an hour about our lives. Now, if we were to record all of that, firstly, it was quite personal. Um, and secondly, it would go on too long. But the lessons that I've been learning, Gary, this week, because I started the week very rocky by literally knocking something off my shelf and breaking my vase. So lovely YouTuber, I've got half a vase here. It really is like a Hollywood set in terms of nothing is real. There's a half a vase. And it started like that. And then another thing came in and it was like, bang, bang, bang. And, you know, you have to have faith in those times that things are going to turn around. And then sure enough, yesterday, two lovely things happened uh, that just gave me my faith back. and. I really do feel, Gary, like it's a lesson that when you are sent these trials and tribulations, which you will be in your life, you have to center yourself. You have to focus on something good, focus on the positive, do something nice to yourself. Try not to panic and just think, OK, this is a little bump. It's like when you're on a plane, turbulence, a bit of bumpy, a bit of bumpy. And then eventually you come through to the smooth bit and land on a fantastic holiday. When you get those thumps, and they do seem to come in threes, don't they? Threes. Yeah, I mean, and we've, we've spoken about this before, and I think we what our conversation was is that actually we have to practice what we preach, you know, and we're not some special special person in this world that Ooh, nothing ever happens to. <laughs> and, and so, you know, um, listening to what you were saying, you know, those you did exactly the things that you should put into your, we talk about a toolbox, toolbox of how you react to things and how you get over stuff and how you move on. And the toolbox was you went to the positive things that were happening. So there was some negative stuff happening in the week, but what you went is you went and searched for the positive things and then just focused your intention and your energy on the positive thing. One of them being Crafty Monkeys, which is the most positive thing to ever come about since we met really and it's not easy I must say you know sometimes those negative things they can really drag you down and you think oh you know and we have to it's almost like we well, need a buddy you know in a way someone telling you like us we'll be your buddy and you know listen to us and say look put those things to one side just find something positive and sometimes you need someone to tell you that rather than being able to do it yourself because sometimes you can't I mean, in that those times when I really felt like it was like one after the other thing, you know, a phone call, something else, an email, and they were all, you know, giving me this negative energy. And if you just give into that and you just then focus on those things and then you wind yourself up, and more things will go wrong and you'll just get stuck. And as we said before, worrying is like sitting in a rocking chair. You just go backwards and forwards. It doesn't achieve anything. And so no. I think you focus on that positive. But I do think that we attract things into our life with the energies that we put out sometimes. Or I think sometimes it's almost the opposite, that sometimes when you're super positive, it's like 
something comes in because it's kind of drawn to you because you're so light, you're putting out so much positivity that it, the other things are drawn to the light that are perhaps really negative. I think also as well, not to be angry. I think that's the key word, Gary, is something mm. we've not talked about really. The other thing we've talked about is vengeful. Now that doesn't work as a natural instinct you want to get someone back. You want to get back. I'm going to, you did that to me. I'm going to do it back. Actually, that's just backwards and forwards of that same ball of horrible energy. It's just going backwards and forwards. And that's really not helping. But you don't, and it's really hard to believe that actually, if they've done something bad to you, that actually that it will come back. But you don't have to physically do it. It will come back to them because that's what they're putting out. They're putting out that negative energy. So unfortunately, matey, you're just going to get negative energy coming back to you. So you don't have to do it. You're not responsible for it. You just think, no, the universe will do that for me. You know, the best yeah. thing to do in life is to live your best mm. life and be kind mm. to people and nice to people and you know, and then just go through your journey. <laughs> but, you know, Rachel, you know, looking at it, I think we can all say this, you know, hindsight is a great thing. And if we looked at Rachel Pierman back along, back 10, 20 years ago, and look at Rachel Pierman then to where Rachel Pierman is now, where Gary Mills is like 20 years, 30 years ago. Oh, my God. If only we knew then. If only we knew yeah. um, how much life would have been much easier or, or traveling. But the, these things that happen to us is actually what makes us what we are here today. Who knows what we're going to be another 10, 20 years down the line again? Who knows? Yeah, there's a, there's a reunion happening at the moment for my drama school and there's a big WhatsApp oh. group. And I'm actually, I'm not going to it, but I was not my best person when I was at that drama school. In fact, I know that. I didn't have a chip on my shoulder, Gary. I had a fish and chip shop on my shoulder. I mean, <laughs> oh, you know. Oh, uh, so... So I don't want to go back into that room with those people because I'd have to explain to 36 people I'm not that person that I was. And I just thought, you know what, I don't want to put myself through that. Um, plus, they're all still talking about singing around a piano for the night. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm no, I don't, you know, I'm no, I've kind of moved on. Try and, be, yeah. try and focus on the positive. Do something nice for yourself and it will come back. And as I was saying to Gary, it's a great conversation yesterday with a lady who was actually trying to help me in a situation I was in. And at the end, I said, and what's your name, by the way? And she said, Hope. And I just thought, you could so not good. have written it. And I actually had a big sob. And, you know, and that's another good thing to do is cry. Let it out. Let those feelings out. Cry. Feel it. You have to feel it. If you push it down, we always say it's going to come back and bite you in the bum. So feel those feelings. Have a good cry because there is actually a, a leveling reaction that happens in the body when you do that. Um, and then and be grateful and I sat there and I actually said thank you thank you thank you thank you whoever has sent that to me thank you very much be grateful practice gratitude try <laughs> <laughs> anyway so today we're going to do some lovely watercolor painting yeah. so I'm quite excited about this because we've seen a lot of these little videos on the old interweb haven't we on Instagram um, yes. and I've saved one and you saved one and we both sort of came together and went well let's do this today so yeah. I'm excited by this so should we bring in your hands Gary? Um, it's a watercolour tinting let me get my samples over here so I can make it much more clearer so I've just got my samples here it's and we've seen this quite a bit on on the internet at the moment especially on like Instagram and stuff where people are painting these ball balls and these are sort of very on trend and um, these are just painted with watercolour paint. And um, I just kept seeing them and I thought they looked so effective. But actually, how accessible is that to everybody? As in the ability. So we all look at these things and maybe for me, who's got some art experience. So well, I'll give it a go. It doesn't, it looks okay. But then if you've got no previous art experience, you might think, oh my God, I'd never be able to achieve that, but I'd like to. Well, actually, I've sort of, Rather than just making it a really polished film, I thought we'd actually bring this into our, our Tea Time tutorial to actually break the process down. And let's see how accessible this is to do, to create these ball balls. Because I think it's, I just think about making cards and making gift tags and things like that. It actually is a quite a nice one. It's a nice practice to do because it's an art practice. And so therefore we know that it actually is quite good for our well-being. But also just think about, you know, we might be, you know, Times are quite tough at the moment. And so it might not be, be able to afford a gift for someone, but I think it'd be really nice if even if we just spent some time creating something for someone and sent them a handmade card. 
the other factor that you need to think, well, if I'm going to spend that money on the postage, which again isn't cheap at the moment, that if we're going to post something to someone, let's make that postage really worthwhile. Let's rather than just a card that's come out of a box or something like that, let's have a go at having a making our own cards. So I've got I've just got some paper underneath here. This is just a bit of that. Um, it's quite a good quality paper. I've just used that sort of universal mixed media paper, but you could use, um, you know, rather a heavier weight of paper to um, to do your painting on. But in fact, this was one of those just a blank card. So this is just a blank card. It comes with an envelope. I've got a little pack for them. Um, I think I've got like I think it's like maybe about twenty or thirty of them for about four pounds. Not again, really nice quality paper. And I just thought, well, actually, I could create the cards on those. So um, I'm going to put this to one side over there. What do you need? Well, we've got the paper. You need some paints. So you've got your watercolour paints. So you can have any type of watercolour paint. These ones are my um, brilliant um, sort of what they call dye based watercolour paints. So they're really quite strong. Um, but I, again, it's down to much how strong the paint is. So we're not doing wishy-washy colours, we're doing quite nice strong colours. So it might be your primary colours or it could be your secondary colours. And remember that's red, yellow, blue, or it could be orange, green and purple. Those sort of colours that are really going to stand out rather than just light wishy-washy touch. I've got some paint brushes here. Whatever really you've got it at hand. But I'll tell you what's quite nice are these ones which are like sort of that sort of shape. They're actually quite good for drawing in the, the colour. And I'll show you how to do that technique in a minute. Um, you might need a pencil for plotting and planning. And I'll talk about that in a minute. You'll need a biro to come in later as well. I've got over here, out of shot coming through, a couple of jam jars of clean water, which I'm just going to put there. And um, one to keep my dirty brush in and one because you will need some clean water as well. And you will need um, something to make circles with. So look, look at home. Um, what you've got, it could be a jam jar, it could be, um, you might keep some lids, but it's something to print. What you've got to do is actually print a circle with the paint. So I've got an egg cup and I've got this little bowl here. So I'm going to do a few sizes. So if we have a look at the one that I did previously, I've got a large size and then smaller size. It does give sort of the impression that if you do a big one sort of like there, the little one looks like it's receding. So it's sort of the little ones look like they're sort of holding back. But another thing, when I talked about plotting and planning, I'll put those down for a minute. <clears throat> Can you see wherever you put the circles, you've got to be able to draw the string. So these are drawn with the biro. The string, you don't really want the string going over. So you don't want to draw, <laughs> get my pen. you don't want to draw the string going over the bauble. So you've got to think where your baubles are so that you can draw your strings. In fact, you might see this one, it's slightly got a bit of a curve to it because I think if I went really straight up, it might have just clipped the side of that. So again, if you need to think, if that maybe the first time you do, I'm going to just put that one in front of me. So you do want just to think if you're going to do, maybe you're going to go into mass production with these cards. So you're going to think, oh, I might make a few of these. Just think where you're going to put your baubles, where they're going to go so that the strings are all okay. So you can just draw around and you can draw around your circle so you can just sort of plot and plan where you want them if you want to or you can go directly in and start printing but you know this just stops you making maybe a mistake okay right let's talk about getting some paint onto these these little um dishes so again remember i said about the color so think about the color think about the intensity of the color and you're just going to do one at a time. You're not going to do print, 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 and then we're going to draw the colour in. We're going to do one at a time. So I'm going to just bring some paint. And literally, I'm just dabbing the paint around the edge, just around the edge. And you've got to be quite quick with this because you don't want the paint. What you don't want the paint is to dry out before you get it down onto the paper. So you're just dabbing it in. You could get a little dish and put some paint in the dish and then use that almost like a sort of a, to pick up the paint with the bowl, you know, go down, press it into the paint, bring it out. But I just painted around the edge of that, like so. Put them back. And then think about where the first one's going to go. You might have drawn it and then you're going to just print. You're going to put it down and then you're just going to, I give it a little turn, not too much just so I've got a little bit of an imprint like so. Now, I've got a little cloth here, my little wet cloth, and I'm just gonna wipe that away because I might use that again. So the paint 
it's not dripping. You might have a little wet cloth. You might have some paper towel just to keep it. Right. Don't talk too much like me. But what you now need to do is you now need to draw that, bring that paint in. So I'm going to get that paintbrush. So this one like this. And I'm going to get it with just some clean water in it. And I'm just going to go and I'm going to use the tip and I'm just going to drag that paint in. So I'm just going to like with a wet paintbrush and I'm just going to draw inside the circle with the wet. So I'm just bringing the paint in, gradually in. But I'm not bringing the cold water out. So you can see it's slightly starting to just sort of slightly starting to bleed out. I'm leaving a little bit where I've not put here. Very hard to see, but I'm leaving a little bit where I'm not actually putting any water. Then I'm going to pick up a little bit of my paint and then I'm just going to bring that in where the water, where the wet is. But just start. Don't worry if it, it bleeds, but you want it, you don't want it wet outside the ball ball, you want it inside the ball ball. So you're just going to bring it in like so. And while it's that you can sort of just push the paint around, you can just with the tip of the brush. You can just start to bring that around and then the paint will move. And just leave a little bit, a little bit of white there. That's almost like it's where the light is hitting the ball ball. Okay. Right now for another one, let's do one more. So we can do a green one this time. So get your paintbrush. You can choose any colors, but choose nice, strong colors, nice. As I said, primary and secondary colours, pick up some green around the edge of the bauble and around the edge of the egg cup and the bauble. We're making the bauble. Right. Nice little paint. Nice strong paint. Snap back in there and then just put that one down. That one can go down here. Just give it a little bit of a just a little bit of a twist so it just leaves a little mark like that. And then you can pick up your brush again, not too much water. And then you're just going to pull in the paint. You're just pulling in the paint from the edge. You're not letting the tip of that brush go beyond that circle that you've just printed. You're just going to pull it in. Start to bring it in. Almost pick up a little bit more colour on your brush if you want to and just bring in a little bit more of that colour in. And you can push that around that paint will move around inside that circle and where the water is it won't it shouldn't go beyond uh, that I might just fill that bit in and just have a little bit of white at the top like that there you go all right let's do one more so I'm gonna you see I'm gonna use a different color because at the moment the greens around that so if you've only got the one egg cup clean your egg cup Add your next colour. So my next colour is going to be a nice strong colour. I like this. I've got a lovely strong purple colour. Okay, just around the edge of that. So it dips. If I show you that, you've got to be careful because it does run. This paint does run down. So just get that around the edge. Pick up the colour. Like that. And then that one can go about there it's almost like you've got to make the decision and just put it down and then give that a little turn like that that can go to one side and then again with your little brush and then just the tip of your brush you're just drawing in the color with the wet with the water bringing it in And what, again, I think when we've, I've spoken about watercolours before, what you need to remember is that you can always layer. So if you find, oh, it's not really quite strong enough to start with, you can always add a little bit more, let it dry, and then you can add another layer or do the same process again. So it's, it doesn't all have to be done in one go. What I will say as well, Gary, is at first, I thought that I wasn't going to get enough paint on my glass because I'm using glasses. Uh, yes. And I thought well, there's not going to be enough on there to make a circle, but there is actually, it, it doesn't look like there's anything on there, but you can print. Yes. And then you've got enough to get you started. As long as you've got that outline started yeah. <clears throat> and then you're, you know, you're going to be fine. Now, 
I don't know how many of you, John, you've got, oh, I can see you've got three down there, Rachel. Yeah, Lovely. Got three. Really nice. Um, now, what you could do is you just could leave these. You could be a mass production. You could do several of them, all drying in natural dry. But because we're doing this for YouTube and we're going to just, we want to speed up a little bit, we're just going to use a hairdryer. Now, warning, hairdryer on full blast is just going to, that wet paint is just going to go, you know, like spray across the paper. So what you need to do is have it on quite low and then just, just gently dry, just gently dry. You don't want to blast that too quickly and then it all like it starts to move all over and the next thing is is we've got to draw the like the strings in and the little sort of bits that sort of are uh, sort of holding what we imagine the ball ball so the little sort of like the little sort of uh fixtures that you do so we're going to just draw the lines first of all now if you don't feel confident that your line is going to be far too wiggly wobbly you could use a ruler and you could just put a ruler and draw against the ruler but actually you know i quite like the the hand-drawn line and it doesn't matter if it slightly goes off or you have to slightly move that line around the bubble like i did before so the, the trick is really is you're heading towards the top of the page if you imagine this down here is the bottom and going upwards so what i would do is sort of consider where the top of the like here where this bubble is and so imagine the middle of the top and then you're just going to draw a line up to the top and off like so and then you can do the same with this one here and then you can do the same. You don't pick up any paint on your hands like that. Then you can just do the same with this one up here. Hopefully I've left myself enough space. Yes, I have, hurrah. Okay, then you do that. Next is you're going to draw the fixtures. So the fixtures, if I draw it on a piece of paper, is a sort of shape like that. Imagine a shape like the top of a roof of a house, but you're gonna make them much smaller. So you can just draw a straight line and then a little slope in either side. And then I just fill that in with a little bit of black pen like that. So we can do those to all of them as well. So imagine like, just like a little flat roof of a house, cross, fill it in like that. And then one up here. So this bit's the easy bit. And again, if you feel, oh, I'm not that, I don't feel confident I'll have to do that straight away with a pen doing that. What you could do is you could just do it with a pencil and then you could go over it in with the with the biro afterwards and then finally the string that it's been tied to would have a little bow so that's literally just two little loops either side up there like that two little loops one two like that maybe slightly bigger one two for that one there so i've just drawn that like that like that so that is just three watercolor baubles well how's yours let's have a look rachel let's have a look <laughs> lovely <laughs> oh my god you've got loads of ball balls i know haven't you <laughs> that's really cool lovely <laughs> okay so you've got to just do the little tie the little like almost like a couple of little wings at either side some little that's it Okay, so now you've got your, your baubles and you could just leave them like that if you wanted to, that's fine. You know, we could just put that in an envelope. Happy Christmas from Gary, happy Christmas from Rachel and just send them off to people, whatever. But you could almost like what I'm calling pimp my baubles. So <laughs> you could. <laughs> so you could, what, what could you add? So you could add, um, you could draw a line, so you could get a, a similar color line around them. So let me just find a pencil or the pink. So what you could do, if you're feeling confident enough, you could just draw like a pencil line around them like that. So you could draw around them with different colors, just very sort of just around the outside of it, just have a pencil line around it like so. That could like top them up a bit, okay? Do that. We'll put some lines around that. The other thing you could do is you could use some glitter or some sequins or anything like that. I've got, in fact, in my little stash of sort of colors, um, this is a color craft um, little bottle of glitter crystals. Now it's the finest glitter crystals. It's almost as it's that sort of stuff where if you've dropped it, it just goes everywhere. It's on your hands, you've got it on your clothes and everything like that. It is so fine. But um, what I would do is once, once it's dried, now make sure it's really fully dried. If you've got any pencil lines left on it and you want to rub them away, all I'd say is make sure that the ink and everything has dried because um, I will show you one I did earlier, earlier, the, one, the previous one. Can you see I 
so I plotted this one with the pencil to start with and had a little play with this. When I went to rub out my black lines, it smudged. Now, it actually doesn't look too bad, but just make sure that your everything is really dry before you even put a rubber to it. Now, if you that's if you've used a, a pencil. OK, so if you want to pimp your baubles, I would suggest it could be some glitter, it could be sequins, um, it could be this fine sort of glitter dust. I'm just going to use some ordinary PVA. So I'm just using some PVA. And in fact, I saved my little my little bottle tops and I just bought the tiniest little blob, the tiniest little blob of PVA. In there. I don't need a big dish of PVA. I'm using quite a fine brush here. And I'm going to wet my brush first before I'm going to dip it into the PVA because I don't want that. I want that PVA to be a little bit more liquid. I don't want it to be really gloopy and and sort of thing and then I'm just going to just literally rub that brush maybe just round sort of in a little bit and do almost like a little crescent shape just bring that in just a little crescent shape around one of my baubles I might just put on this little bauble I might just put it underneath that highlight just here and up here again I might just put the highlight just where the highlight is and just have it up there I'm going to make sure I look after my brush and I'm putting that directly back in water because PVA does you know it does wash off that's quite nice if you haven't got pva you could use um a prick stick you might have um some other type of glue that you could use you might have some what's called um acrylic medium that you could use that as well if you've got that but really just ordinary pva this in fact i think i got very reasonable i think it's from a sort of children it's kids zone and this is just ordinary washable pva it's all you need not very expensive now if you've got your crystals, you've got your glitter, you've got your sequins. Now is that time. Do you remember we always used to do this at Christmas time where we like to sprinkle the glitter onto our decorations, a little bit of glitter onto the decorations. You might want to just sort of either just shunt it, like move it around a little bit, or you could just brush it with a little, what I would suggest, is just if you then get another dry brush, not a wet brush, but just a dry brush and just tickle your glitter or your crystals or your sequins around so just move that around there and then tap it off onto a clean sheet of paper and then you would leave that to dry now i don't know if we can catch can we catch the glitter on there i think a little bit so i'm not over pimping my baubles you see i'm just happy oh yeah look you just i just caught that now there you are so what have you, did you have anything, Rachel, that you could put on yours? Did you? Yes, I did. I'm just playing with it at the moment, actually. Oh, yeah. So and you. I was going to say, do you remember when we used to put it on a piece of paper, always fold your piece of paper first in half, because then all you do is you then fold that like that, and then you can tip all your spare glitter, or your crystals or your sequins back into the jar to play with another day so you've not wasted it i still managed to get some on my work surface but it's i've got most of it there there you are right i'm getting there i'm getting there hang on You're getting there sorry i'm making you rush i'm just washing out my so already i've got quite a a collection of um cards now that i can send off um but before you write in them and um put them in an envelope do make sure they're dry so i'd leave them especially with the glitter um and in fact i would let that once i put the whatever embellishment on the top um i'd let that dry naturally um rather than using a hairdryer because hairdryer might have a tendency to blow it all off so just use that just do that but again it's just less is more as always with things that you design it's not like full of glitter all over it it's a little bit just a little bit less Well, I could do this for hours. <laughs> do it for hours. So you've got you've got fingers involved in everything, Rachel. Oh, hell yeah, I'm having a glorious time. My work surface is a complete and utter shambles. And my print sticks all dried. You could over bling. <laughs> I've over pimped my baubles. Oh, <laughs> never lived that one down. Right, okay. Well that will do. That will do. It's too it's too many really, but it will do. Right. Oh, there we are. <laughs> oh, no, yours has got a lot. It's lovely. And do you know, it's got such a, a, you know, we're all different, aren't we, with the way we, we mark, make and do things. And again, it just looks completely, you know, it looks, it's the same principle as mine, but you've made it your own. And I love the, 
I love the tiny little um, ball balls. And it's, it's that almost like that goldy one. It's like a heart ball ball. Yes, well, so I um, did a couple of things here that um, I wanted to introduce in. So the first thing is to say with the glitters, by the way, uh, advertising a bit of MAC makeup here. I'm not affiliated. Ah. But yeah, I used some MAC eyeshadows. So that was oh. one. Yeah, so that's given me the um, the shimmer on the card there um, on the baubles. So that's just because you can see. Do you know, I, I mean, they, I hadn't even thought of um, using sort of like gold makeups and things like that. But yeah. obviously, because I'm I'm got any. But yeah, why not? Yeah, and then these why little not? tiny stars, which you're, you know, those, um, they yeah. were actually as part of a '70s fancy dress costume that I bought, and they came in a little packet, and you stick them on your face. So they are tiny. Yeah. But I probably, like I said, I put too many on, but it's because I've got too much. I couldn't control the prick stick. Um, right. So they are yeah. high like, and there's too many on there. But anyway, that's fine. And then, so another tip that I saw. So what happened here, I actually, when I was doing this bauble, I dropped paint yeah. on there and I had a big blob of paint. So I got a cotton wool bud. And yes. I just literally did a circle like this. So Wonderful. This is really small. Yeah. And I was able yeah. then to keep it because if I'd gone in with a brush, I think it would have been bigger. So I just created yeah. a little bauble to cover that mark. Yeah. And this, I saw this on Instagram today. Someone said to create a heart shape for your um, bauble, you would get a toilet roll and just. Oh, do... yes. Yes. So you actually you paint around that. So you manipulate yeah. the cardboard tube and then yes. you can create shapes with that. What a good idea. Yeah. Wonderful. There, there's the painted side. So it Love worked. It. I just had to fill it in a little bit on the top, but it generally worked. So, so that was what that. Actually, yeah. So the actually what we've seen on, you know, everything going on social media doing these things, it is actually quite doable. And there's lots of little variations. We've both used different paints, but got really good results. So you've got, um, is that a, uh, just an ordinary block of Reeves colour paints you're using there? Yes. Yeah. Just literally. Um, yeah, just, well, it's, look, I don't even know what make is. Oh, like, even non-branded, non-branded paints. And you've managed to get some nice colours out of there. Yep. And it is, and again, play with whatever you've got. Whichever, just think bling, bling it up. So just add in, if you've got some glitter dust, if you've got some shiny makeup or something, you could dab onto it, anything like that. I love it. Really, yeah. really good. Yeah. So right. you could probably get that makeup off there as well. But anyway, yeah, I love it. It's nice. It's nice. Yeah. I mean, as I say, I would take a lot more time with that and um, I wouldn't, because I've got all these smudges everywhere, which irritated me, but I would take more time and play with it and, um, you know. I think that it's key. You know, when you say about smudging, what you've got to check is like, have you got paint on your hands when you put your hand down or when you're drawing around it? Because it's so yeah. easy to transfer that on there. Um, yeah. You can also, what you can do um, is you can mask off areas as well. So say for instance, you wanted to just work on this bauble up here. What you could do is put a piece of clean paper over the top, as long as it's dry, and then you're not going to then mark necessarily anywhere else so that you yeah. could then just look and say, oh, I want to draw that. So just mask it off, could be with some um, paper towel or just some other piece of paper. And then you can then just draw that in and work on that. So yeah, I think, um, I think you will learn as you go along. You know, Once you've made your first one, and if your first one's got a few smudges on it, you then think, well, why did those smudges get there? OK, I'm going to be much more careful, check my hands, have a wet cloth by the side of me, a piece of um, kitchen towel, and I can clean up as I go along and do that. But I, I'm, I'm really pleased with the results. I think um, it is accessible to everyone. I think even if you, you're young people at home, if they're home in the holidays or anything like that, or want to encourage people to make things for Christmas, this is a great one to start with. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Okay, Perfect. let's bring this back into vision. Good. Well, the key for me, yeah. Gary, is I have messy fingers, so this yeah. is good. Um, and I have bought more clips and things for my board here. So I do. Oh, do you know what? They're full already. They're full already. They are. Yeah, I think I have space there with my flowers. There we are. Perfect. Pride of place. Yes, Lovely. Well, I have to say, I thought that was a lot of fun. So lovely YouTube. If you have liked the content, remember, give us a thumbs up. We are sat here just doing this for ourselves, but also for you as well. It'd be lovely if you could give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and then you'll be notified when we put out another Tea Time tutorial, which will be, of course, next Friday. And we don't know, we, we keep trying to get guests on the show, so we've had quite a flurry of guests. So we'll see if someone appears next week, but if not, there will be someone at some point joining us. And if not, it's just me and Gary, and we hope 
dear YouTuber, that that is enough for you. Thank you so much, lovely Gary, as always, for bringing this to us today and showing us his beautiful techniques. Um, and thank you to you for watching. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye.